digital. Then let well, welcome back, everybody, or welcome for the first time if you're just visiting us um, to Digital Film Farms, cameras and credit cards, the real deal behind the scenes filmmaking. Um, this particular episode I haven't really seen, so Hunter, where are we at? We had a cliffhanger ending the last time. We did. Uh, Louise Fletcher might not do the film. We've got John Mellencamp, we've got Louise Fletcher, and so they got the money, yeah. and now they might not have Louise Fletcher. And thus they might not have the money. There you go. So that's where we left off on episode six. Yeah. So we're picking that story up again here. Bob is down in the dumps. Yep. Um, he's calling his wife, Tara Lean. Um, I don't know if he's crying, but it sure looks like he's on the verge of tears. He probably was, and, which um, I would be too. We also see Johnny Mikolos, and uh, we love Johnny Mikolos here at the Digital Film Farm. Um, and he, as you may know, is taken over as transportation captain. So there's more Johnny, Johnny Mikolos as transportation captain. Oh, man, that's getting kind of scary. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we better let him go see it, Hunter. Yeah. See you at the backside. Martin had already backed out. We told him Martin was involved with the picture, and two weeks before we leave to come here, Martin backs out of the picture. We told him we have Louise Fletcher. One week into being here, we call him back and say, we don't have Louise Fletcher. So as far as I was concerned, our financing was in dire jeopardy. We seem like that prototypical slimy producer who says, yeah, I got this actor, and I have this actor, and I have this actor, when they really don't, but we really did. Uh, the offer was to Fletcher obviously keeps the pay or play offer that I had given her and then she would work these the two weeks here for scale and Renee Jeanette came back and said nope can't do that she needs $37,000 a week so I said oh, yeah right how the heck are we ever going to do that there's no way it's going to happen and uh, Bob was trying to get a hold of Luis so we can talk to her and I said please come on what's going on I called Tara Lean right away and I told her about it and uh, she said stay centered and let go and trust and that's what I did. I let go because we, I, I had, if, if, the, if the picture's going down the tubes, I have to accept it. You know, I, I, I can't, no single person can hold this hostage, I just can't, you know. I have an idea. Instead of just calling Louise, I draft a letter and I send a bunch of flowers to her house with the letter. It takes long. So I can do it in an hour. You think that's more effective than uh, just talking to Then her? I follow up with a phone call. But she gets the flowers first. I called up Louise, left a message saying that she's the first choice. I don't want anybody else to do this role, but that everybody is getting scale, and we don't have it in the budget, and I'm really worried. The next day, or actually, she calls and says, um, she's doing the picture. So I was happy. She left a message at the production office, and she, in her very warm, gracious way, I'm sorry, of course I'm going to do your picture. I've been looking forward to doing this picture. She says, but Renee is looking out for my monetary best interest. That's her job. So. I can't blame her. I kind of like her name, Jeanette. She's, she's funny. She swears. She's from Brooklyn. We're trying to put every penny on the screen so we don't want to splurge on the luxuries like uh, fine transportation. You know, it's just the bare bones, the basic. <laughs> <laughs> and it would be number seven. Yeah, we'll... Okay. Well, the Terralene running naked oh, is going to be down there. Never mind. Maybe that to uh, shot outside of them running into the building, shot of the tunnel downstairs, perhaps, shot of them running up those stairs that we just saw, and now more pursuit throughout this complex on this level. We're going to have rain showers. The whole thing's going to be fucking dripping. Dripping wet. Right, right. So the right type of lights, the lighting at night, put them random so we can actually see them. The cars with smaller lights. You can have them put them all over just so they don't look like film lights. 
Oh, it's gonna look nice at night with his light. But there's rain dripping, there's all kinds of atmosphere in here, I guess, or yeah. wherever the shit I can think of. He's running. Shoot it right here. This window's gonna blow out. During this naked scene. Yes. Here's some feathers for you. But during this naked scene is yeah. when you're gonna do it. Are we, how are we doing with our pigeons? I forgot what they was. Ten dollars a pigeon, ten dollars a fifty. But yeah, look at that. I don't know. They look too cool over here. Yeah, Rise come into here. He's a little bit ahead of him, and leads Joe into this room right here, this door. And he's created an altar near that window that raises him up on a platform and eventually that the window he goes he goes off that window he goes up that window backs up that goes backwards with the camera facing himself and this will be uh, replaced with wood or? yeah what this will be yeah this will be a breakaway thing uh -huh. that's awesome get, get those pigeons get those pigeons get those pigeons that looks cool we can pick this up we can buy this is there a zoom on this oh yeah there it is but, it's already uh, wide. This is what we have to buy if production is a pays. There you go. <laughs> and this looks like what you need right here, oh, guys. Twenty-four dollars. That's I think is the the sniffers. Small. Which one? Oh, yeah. Right here. Same one I got. All right, let's get that. What's Remember, I told you guys. Oh yeah. Okay. What yeah. do they do? They, they sniff out power. Oh okay. They tell you if the line is hot or not. It tells you. Uh, it tells you. Uh, it tells you if the line is hot first of all, yep. and then it tells you if the wiring is correct. Don't get this thing. I mean, get get the single thing. Oh, okay. Um, organizing the shelves, making the truck workable, testing the equipment, inventorying the equipment, basically getting it ready to work for uh, the shooting day. All right. Is everything working? Everything's working. Except those lights over there. Oh, well, we're firing them up, and they're not they're not burning the way we want them to. So we just got to dial them in. I told them not to do that. And where did the scripts go to? Do we know? I don't know. Kathy, I think, keeps track of, of that but pretty carefully, but I don't know where the scripts went. If this went to intermediate, this is bad news. Hey. I'm saying, did any of these scripts go out? Yeah. To so, so who? It went out to 112 intermediate. This is fucking bad. This is horrible. Every single time, every single time, well, I told we'll Kathy, uh -huh. come to me first. Dor made her do that. Dora said, you've got to get the script out now. Yeah, well, she doesn't know what's going on. Those are, that's, I mean, they're all fucked up. What happened? They're not, they're not in order. There's scenes missing. And I don't know what happened because I wasn't here. We'll, we'll For intermediate, this is fucked. It's, it's, it, it doesn't matter. We can just get a, just print out another one. Uh, you can print out another one from uh, the computer, can't you? From Tony? Yeah. Tony's here. Yeah, we'll just print another Tony, one. Tony, where are you? I think you ran down the hall. Just print another one out over there. For intermediate, it's not a big deal. We'll just uh, send them another one. We'll tell them the, the script that we have. It's not the no, right but it's, one. It's the second time it happened in okay, about. Well, I understand that. I understand that. Don't but, go into but, my file. If you're dealing with my script, come to me. But what happened was Chris Dorr was putting the pressure on Kathy yesterday, I believe. And he was saying, oh, Bob shouldn't be doing this type of stuff. Well, he, somebody else has to do this. Bob cannot do this because he's got to do. The directing has but nobody else seems to be competent to do it. This is the same problem we had before. Nobody else could co collate the scripts the right way. I don't understand what the problem is. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it doesn't look that hard. Look, this is the beginning of scene 92. If we go 66, we have two 66s. We have a white and a blue. Right? That's impossible, right. number one. Well, hold on a second. 61. Tony was here also, so he over so it's a lot of stuff. What happened was, for some reason, this, when I printed the blue page, we cut this scene out. This is Marna. Right. We cut this That's out. gone. So for some reason, when I printed this, it printed this white page. I don't know why. It wasn't blue. So I, I went through it, and I caught that. Uh-huh. I changed it to a blue page, reprinted it. Well, this is blue. Right, but we, we've blue. lost the whole scene. There's no scene. It goes, from, it goes from 66 to the beginning to, this is the end of 66. This is the end of the scene, right? Of the end of the scene. Okay. Now we should start with, not this, but Joe making his way through a cluster. Joe making his way, 66. 
goes to here, then then goes to 67, correct? Is that true? Wait a minute. Yeah, wait a minute. He breathes in and yells through his patch laryngectomy. He sees the old man. Okay. And now then he goes to him. Right. Okay. So this was only there because it was a mistake, but the pa the scripts that went out did, did not have that. No, I caught that and we okay. took it out. Okay. That's it. Okay. <laughs> I can't okay. believe it. I went through the script personally, page by page, against the computer. Right. To make sure it was correct. And I caught it, and I you fixed it. You are the man, Tony. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. So 67. Okay, so this is just... Eight, 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 eight. Throw out. This is John Mikolos, my transportation captain. We rented this vehicle at rent a -Rec, so he's and he was in charge of doing so. So to return it, he drops it off at Benson's Towing instead of rent a -Rec because he's probably the best transportation captain there ever has been, and I know Hollywood is going to be knocking on his door. So we got to try to find rent direct now so we can drop this off. Oh, contraire, contraire, contraire. I did not rent this vehicle. I did not pick up this vehicle. You told me, I, rent a wreck is just, is right there. Who dropped me off here? I don't know, Scottsville Road, everything looks the same. <laughs> this place, if we go to Renorex, this place will look identical to Renorex. Only the sign will be different, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, Mr. Smarty Pants, why did you stop here then? I didn't, I was going this way, but then I saw you, those ugly legs of yours over here on the ground, and I said, there's Johnny. So, oh. Thank you. Now here it is, you see, it doesn't say Benson's towing, it says Rent-A-Wreck. That. You see this sign here? Everything looks the same on Scottsville Road. It says rent a wreck. The, the signs that are on this van say rent a wreck also. They, they, over there it says Benson's Towing. Wow, um, Johnny Mikolos is transportation captain. I'll tell you what, I, I certainly love Johnny, but uh, I don't know if he'd be my first choice for transportation captain. I like the episode a lot. Um, I really, I really get, get a sense of the excitement now that we're here. We're, you know, the, the film's really yeah. going to happen. You know, the, the scare of Louise Fletcher was a real scare. You know, the, the tension's heating up. You yeah. know, and, and, and independent filmmaking, you know, it's, there's, there, there's, there's tension. There's a lot going on. Well, was there anything that you've left out or that you really feel like, you know, you want some feedback on about this episode that you were struggling with and you didn't know if it turned out right or not? Well, um, there's a lot of footage, just like hour and a half of footage um, that you took during like a whole crew meeting mm -hmm. that uh, Van Hyden, the dire uh, assistant director, ran with the whole crew there and they went over every single scene in the movie. Right. And this was location. just before, so this is the whole crew just before production, and yeah. they're going through each and the, kind of each and every day in an overview on what they're what they're going to be doing, opportunity for everybody to meet each other and, and stuff. Right. Okay. Yeah. And although I couldn't find a good place in the episode, um, I think it'd be really cool to see just as a filmmaker. So um, I was planning on putting that out as a supplemental. Um, but let us know if you you know if you watch the supplemental or if you're into filmmaking. Watch the supplemental from the point of view of you're going to have to do crew meetings and just look at what happens here. This is a time where people get together and share, you know, the plan. This is the big plan. This is the layout of the next 30 days. Regardless of the size of your crew, to sit down and, and, and talk over the plan and make sure that there's, you know, there's always going to be gaps, but make sure that those gaps are few and far between. Yeah, and Van's a pro, so you can learn from how he does it. Absolutely, yeah. You're going to definitely, you know, learn from, from Van what's, you know, how a bigger, you know, crew production meeting would go. How about, uh, so anything else? Anything that we're really going to look forward to for this next episode? Let's make everybody excited about it. Well, next episode is the last day of pre-production. Uh, so um, everything that still needs to be done has to be done. And um, I think we pick them up midday, so that's like uh, 10 hours, 15 hours. So um, Chris is running around. Um, there's an issue with uh, some trailers and some vehicles, which he has to sort out. Uh, Johnny Coca has to sort out some contracts. It seems every time we... Uh, see Johnny Coca these days, he's sorting out contracts last minute, but um, he's got to do that. And um, there's this heartfelt moment at the end with Bob, and he's toasting the film, and he's toasting the crew. And So that's going to be a good one. So we've got some good stuff coming up from you, for you. Give us some feedback. Let us know um, what you like. Interact with us. Go to digitalfilmfarm.com and sign up for the mailing list. On the mailing list, you're going to be part of the Insiders Club. 
And with that, you're going to have an opportunity to come to some of the Google Plus Hangouts. We're going to be doing some master class talking about directing and going over camera blocking. We've got some lighting tutorials coming up. And that's the kind of stuff we're going to be sharing. And if you sign up for um, to be on the Insiders Club for the newsletter at digitalfilmfarm.com, um, you're going to get on the inside scoop and you're going to get the first invites to some of this stuff. You can also find us on Twitter. And Hunter is Hunter uh, Dimmon. I'm just Hunter Dimmon, and you're just John Holzer. John Holzer. Google Plus, same thing. I think I'm John Holzer. We'll check into it and put the name down here. And uh, Exactly. And uh, YouTube. Some of you are watching this on iTunes. Um, you can also, you're going to find the supplementals on YouTube. And just go under Digital Film Farm for YouTube. So uh, be sure to go to digitalfilmfarm.com, sign up for the perks, and until then, uh, happy filmmaking, folks. You didn't want to say it, did you? I thought we were going to say it together. Oh, we were? One, two, three. Happy, happy filmmaking. filmmaking.